Good evening. My name is Nicholas Rogers. I am in University of Physics 1. The days I attend class is Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 12.20 p.m. The professor is Dr. Storr, and today my lecture topic will be going over linear and angular velocity. So a brief outline of today's video. Um, first, I will be writing out the two equations that can be used to find both velocities. I will be talking about each part of, the, of those velocities, as well as giving like real world examples of that. And after that, I will then solve out a problem. One to two problems, depending on the time I have. So, first off, we have velocity. Please don't judge the uh, handwriting. I do have a little bit of bad handwriting. So, the formula for angular velocity we win as this. And then the formula for linear velocity can be written as this. So, when you think about um, angular and linear velocity, they they really are similar, but the two main, but the only difference is, is basically how the distance is being calculated. So. For angular, it's going by degrees. So if you're like on a circle, and like let's say you're going like around a circular track, right? Let's say you're going around a circular track. This is the center. It's basically measuring from like here to here. How this is the distance, and then you're gonna go by the time to find the velocity, whereas for linear straight line so you think about straight line you're going to say okay from point A to point B and this is my time how fast is this going so that's the two ways you can think about um, the velocities like the differences so linear is on a straight line and angular is going around a circle go around a circle now the theta for an angular velocity stands for the degrees and then the d stands for like this regular distance t for both of these is still time for both you want to try to keep your time in seconds now I will run out of problem so the problem I'm going to be choosing to solve today is going to be dealing with angular velocity. So you can basically say that a car is driving on a circular track at two hundred and twenty degrees in a time of zero point two five seconds now you've been given your degrees and your time but the thing is you have to convert your degrees into radians so the way you do that is you can multiply that by pi over 180 degrees so first step is 
Let's write our formula. So what gives us angular velocity? This is what's going to give us angular velocity. So first step to solve this problem is we take our degrees. So we have 220 degrees. All right, 220 degrees. To try to convert this into radians. So we have to multiply this by pi over 180. Okay, so when you must have about pi over 180, you're going to get, just press into my calculator right now, you're going to end up getting 3.839 radians. Now, we'll plug all this information to the formula because we have all the information right now. So, angular velocity is going to be radians over 0 0.25 seconds. I'm going to punch this into my calculator to get the answer. Answer is going to be fifteen point three five six radians. So that's how you solve for your angular velocity. So, in summary, we stated what the topic is going to be about. I have written out both equations and described what the difference is, is between linear and angular velocity, as well as denoting what each thing in the equation stands for. Now, for that, we then What's the next step, which is solving the equation? So we solved a angular equation to find a velocity. Went through the steps, which was converting the degrees to radians, then taking those radians and dividing by the time, which was 0 0.25 seconds to get our answer, to get our final answer. I thank you so much for um, listening to my video and I hope that this was very informative.